All right, welcome back. Today we're going with the sarcomere. Your skeletal muscles in your body are made up of many layers. The innermost layer is called the myofibril. Within the myofibril are, called, are sections called sarcomeres. And these sarcomeres are what do the contractions of the muscle. So for example, whenever you flex your biceps or you, you, know, you flex your abs, for example, you're doing sit-ups, it's actually the sarcomere itself that's changing in length that causes the contractions. That's how you're able to, able to lift weights or even hold yourself, you know, stand up. It's contractions of the sarcomere. Now to note in physiology exams, most questions are on the sarcomere, not on the actual layers of the muscle. The layers of the muscle are usually like anatomy questions. Since this is physiology, most of the questions are directed on the sarcomere. So also to preface that the, what we're talking about is skeletal muscle. So anything you can voluntarily move and contract. So for example, your stomach is, is made up of smooth muscle. This does not apply. We're not talking about any sarcomeres here. You're not able to contract your stomach on command, right? You can, you, it's not possible. You can only basically do your arms, your legs, or whatever you can move, okay? Any muscles you can move has sarcomeres, okay? So that's why I draw this picture here of a bicep, tricep, right? Is I'm just indicating this is what we're talking about. This is the type of muscle we're talking about. So inside the muscle, the innermost layer, if you're going to basically chop it up, and look inside would be the myofibril. And if you take a microscope, you would see that the myofibril are made up of sarcomeres, which is this diagram here. This, it may look a little confusing. Don't even worry about it. We're gonna go over it pretty slowly. So this diagram here is a sarcomere. So let's break it down layer by layer here. Notice that we have these white zigzag lines, right? They kind of look like Z's, okay? These Z look structure right here. From one Z to the other Z line is one sarcomere. So this section right here between the two Z lines is one sarcomere. So this white bridge looking figure here, structure, is called the Z-line. The sarcomere is made up of two types of filaments. One is called actin and the other one is myosin. Actin is also known as the thin filament. This blue looking structure here I drew is actin or the thin filament. This red structure, tube looking structure here, is known as myosin, which is the thick filament. These are what does the contracting of the muscle. So whenever you flex your bicep, or you move your abs, or you're at the gym working out, it's these interaction between, between these two filaments that causes the contraction. How does that happen? I'm gonna make a whole video on it, but just a very, very brief overview of what happens. Is that these myosin filaments have little heads on them. And when stimulated by calcium, they actually kind of latch on to actin. They latch on to actin. And what they do is they pull on actin then they release and then they pull even more and more and more. This causes the sarcomere length to shorten. And when this happens is a contraction. And I can prove this to you. So if you stretch your arm out and you start flexing, 
your bicep actually is getting smaller if you compare it to you know having your arm fully extended and contracting it all the way the size of the bicep actually shortens this is exactly what we're talking about is this this sarcomere is shortening maybe i'll go to like this length when myosin pulls on actin that's what we're talking about by contraction this is how it happens is by myosin pulling on actin you'll probably notice that there's something called titan it's this yellow spring-like structure that's attached to myosin so this titan it literally acts as a spring it binds to myosin and the other side it binds to the z line it basically what titan does is it keeps myosin in place so it doesn't you know just get cut off and you know it'd be a big problem it stays in one place but also it acts as a spring so when you have contractions it shortens and then when we're done with the contraction it can go back to its normal resting position titan is like a spring you probably noticed that we have some terms here called a band m line i band and z line in h zone unfortunately for exams this is what you really need to memorize is this is what you're usually tested on and it's all memorization but we're going to go over it slowly i also have a little key here so you can take a picture if you like but we're going to go over the key as well so let's i what i did is i labeled it from from start like from the top here downwards easiest to hardest so let's begin so we already went, we went over actin we went over myosin we went over titan so let's start with the actual the basically the bands and lines here in the sarcomere so the first thing is the z line which is this zigzag looking portion right here these indicate the end of the sarcomere so z line to z line so z line to z line is the length of one sarcomere so this section here is the one sarcomere from z line to z line the m line is really easy it's literally the middle of the sarcomere if you were to cut the sarcomere in half that's the m line m meaning middle the a band is the length of the myosin filament so this a band here is the length of myosin is i don't know why it's called a band to be honest i have no idea maybe because you know m line was already taken so they couldn't call it like a myosin band or something like that because that would you know confuse it with m line but it's called a band it's the length of the myosin filament the eight zone is where it gets a little bit complicated the eight zone is just like the a band except there's one difference it is the length of the myosin but it's only the length of the myosin when there's no actin overlapping so notice that the a band we have you know actin over here right it's overlapping with the myosin the myosin filament right with eight zone it's this section right here where it's only myosin and no actin there's a space between the middle of the myosin filament when there's no actin so the actin just to make sure that, you know just so you understand is the actin doesn't go all the way down across z line to z line there's a gap here there's no actin here basically the gap where there's no actin and only myosin is called the h zone so it's the length of the myosin filament with no actin overlapping lastly you have the i band the I band is the length from one myosin filament to the next myosin filament in the sarcomere. So the adjacent sarcomere, so the next door neighbor essentially. So what's the distance between the end of one sarcomere, or rather, sorry, the, the end of one myosin to the start of another myosin in another sarcomere? 
That's what the I band is. That could be maybe the most complicated for you. It could be H zone. Everyone's different on how basically they understand this. But for me, I band was the most complicated when I learned this. You're basically looking at two sarcoma mirrors, right? So that's why I drew this myosin here and the myosin here. And there's, you have Titan here on the other side. So this, this section right here that would go on would be another sarcoma mirror. So the I band, just to say it again, is the end of one myosin to the beginning of a second myosin in another, sacro, in another sarcoma mirror next door. And that is the sarcomere. So usually on physiology exams, you'll be given this blank template with no labels, no myosin, no actin, no titan, no I-band, none of these labels I drew. It's just gonna be this structure, this, this diagram basically. It's gonna look exactly like this. And they're gonna be like, fill in the blank. What is this zone? This, this, there'll be like a little, uh, maybe like a, like a line here or some kind of way to indicate this is a question. So the question would be like, what is this section called right here? And you would say, it's A band. What is this section called right here? That's the H zone. There'll be an arrow to this thick filament. Yeah. What is the thick filament called? Myosin. What's the thin filament called? Actin. Those are the type of questions you'll have, most likely. Sometimes you'll have multiple choice or like, um, like a question where it's like a sign, they'll give you like the definition. So what the definition will be like, what's the length of the sarcomere? And you're going to say it's Z-line. You'll be given a definition. What's the length of the myosin filament? That'll be A-band. Those kind of questions. So that concludes the sarcomere. We're gonna make another video on how it actually contracts, which is a big video. But this is just the basics. So it's really important you know these terms and bands and lines and what actin, myosin, and titan are. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. And until tomorrow, later.